Hello, my name is Mike Yeomans, and I'm a lighting lead here at Motive. Today my teammates and I are going to talk a bit about the lighting on Dead Space Remake. First of all, we're going to talk about how we are recreating the fantastic lighting design of Dead Space 1, we'll follow up with our lighting process and advances in real-time lighting, and lastly, we'll show you how we create an immersive sense of atmosphere, which is an important visual pillar for us. Dead Space had iconic design down to the last detail and the lighting fixtures weren't left out of this equation. They just felt unique and that they fit into the design of the ship perfectly. We have reimagined the lighting design of the Ishimura and Valor, staying true to the originals while creating additional fixtures that fit into this established direction. The fixture design feels modern while the bulb technology feels grounded in the present day. We are creating the illusion of depth in our fixtures so you can see the inner workings of the bulb beyond the glass using emissive shaders with a parallax effect. The brightness of the fixture respects the intensities of their real world counterparts and our lighting system uses the surface area of our emissive surfaces to determine how bright the bulbs get. Our volumetric lighting creates realistic cones of light that are unique to each fixture design so we get really interesting shards of light with a hint of color. Much like in the real world, we use Kelvin temperature to determine the hue of our lights, so once again they feel familiar to what you would expect in real life. Area lights were previously reserved mostly for cinematics due to their increased performance cost. We are using them more extensively in Dead Space Remake, as they help to create convincing specular shapes, diffused lighting and shadows, and a more accurate volumetric shape. Simply put, they have lighting qualities that standard spotlights just can't achieve. Area lights make the most sense for rectangular looking light fixtures such as signage. It would have been hard to reproduce the lighting from these types of sources with more punctual lights. Hi, my name is Mathieu Tetro and I'm a senior lighting artist on Dead Space Remake. Our lighting artists are able to craft the lighting in real time and control exactly how much indirect light or global illumination is bouncing around the scene. In previous game, we had to do offline calculation to pre-compute lighting and apply it to geometry in the form of light maps. This was time consuming for artists and will limit any drastic lighting changes. Our remake is using a new GPU probe system which allow real-time approximation of indirect light. Artists can get direct feedback from the change and can better match the amazing concept art. Our tools allow lighting artists to visualize individual lighting passes and material properties to isolate issues and iterate on quality. As each light is activated and dialed in, we can see the bounce lighting react in real time. This approach was essential to ensure we can accommodate all the drastic lighting changes that occur in real time in front of the player. Scary lighting changes, quarantine, light flickering. We place fixture in the ship, much like it would have been assembled in a shipyard. Then we give an area a distinct character by changing the behavior and setting on each fixture instance. This allows each area to have its own signature mood, ambience, and level of horror. We focus on developing credible light behavior, such as flickering, that is specific to different types of light, from fluorescent to incandescence and halogen. Imagine an old fluorescent light tube constantly flickering while trying to turn on. In this video, we can see how the electrical current is driving the behavior of different fixture technology, from fluorescent to incandescent. Hi, I'm Guillaume Goudreau. I'm a lead outsource lighter on Dead Space Team. In game development, we often use fog to help simulate atmospheric perspective and add ambience to a level. It is used to communicate a sense of depth and detach the different element of the background. In Dead Space, the atmosphere of the ship is one of the key contributors of the sense of horror. To create that atmosphere, we've gone one step further. We are putting a lot of energy into creating a realistic volumetric fog solution. First, we need a lot of control to create the dreadful atmosphere expected in Dead Space. With our system, we can simulate a layered fog approach. We have control over the texture that move and shift inside of the fog. We can control the speed of the movement and detail in the texture. 
we can recreate a fog creeping along the floor. We have also control over the absorption. It gives the feeling of a thick, dense smoke that absorbs light. Very much like the smoke that collects on the ceiling during a fire. We can also control the color of the fog for those moments when we need a little extra punch. Second, we need a convincing light interaction with the fog. When we combine our lighting and the fog, we immediately see the impact. We can easily sculpt and tweak the shard of light cutting across the room. It really add a lot to a scene. We can go from the simplest environment to a gloomy looking scene. Lastly, we need something flexible. Whenever we have a big change and we need to adjust the mood of the scene, we can animate and adjust the environment fog. This is especially useful when we do transition from the inside of the USG Ishimura to the outside. We will be able to contrast the heavy ambience of our interior with the complete lack of atmosphere in the outer space.